Hey everybody, it's Andrew back again with another video. And today we have our review of the Asus ZenBook 14 OLED UM3402, all new for 2023. What this brings to the table, of course, is a beautiful 14 inch OLED display, 2.8K resolution. It is absolutely gorgeous, 90 hertz refresh rate, 0.2 millisecond response time. What can I say? It's absolutely fantastic. And what's even more fantastic is the price. Now, this model model here is the Ryzen 5 model. It's the Ryzen 5 7530U. And that, of course, has a price tag. Yeah, get this, $699. That, to me, is a steal, considering that this has a premium high-end display that this sports. We're going to find out if everything else about it is great, and especially this price-to-performance ratio, which is off the charts. Hey, everybody, it's Andrew, and this is my review of the Asus ZenBook 14. OLED UM3402 here for 2023. Coming up. Now, before we get to the unit itself, I just want to let everyone know in the interest of transparency and full disclosure, I'm not being paid by Asus. I'm not being sponsored by Asus. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Asus is not getting copy approval. That means they're seeing this video for the first time, just like you. Now, this unit is on loan from Asus. And once this review is done, I'll be sending it back. Now, you could pick up the ZenBook 14 OLED for $699 over at Walmart. And that is the uh, Ryzen 5. But if you want the Ryzen 7 with a little bit more RAM and, of course, a bigger SSD, I would go for this one, 869 and that is a really good price, especially considering you're getting a premium 14-inch OLED display. Now, for more information and where you can buy it, check the link in the description below. And with the specs and pricing out of the way, let's find out what you get inside the box. Okay, so we get some documentation here, of course. We've seen this before. We'll get to the unit in a moment. You also get this that I just took out of the box. Uh, so talking about the really nice OLED display here. And, you know, they, they have really been getting some great value out of a really high-end display. And I really like that. Let's put that to the side. Let's take a look at the charger. But let's see if they give us a, anything else in here, like a sleeve. No sleeve in the box for those wondering. So I know I was. Okay, so let's take a look real quick at this uh, 65 watt USB type C adapter. And then of course we get the unit itself. And right away, you know the drill, it's a fingerprint magnet. So we're talking about a color called Jade Black. You can actually see it here. Let me give you the front of it. There it is. It is collecting fingerprints already. It's a beautiful laptop, I gotta tell you. It's a nice color. It's just gonna show a lot of fingerprints. There's nothing you can do about it. It's pretty thin. Pretty nice weight to it. Again, this is very similar to what we saw in the Intel-based version. Just the unit alone, it's on pounds. So let's see what that is. Three pounds, two ounces. 1.417 kilograms, it's, it's in between. Power charger, so this is the total travel weight of 1.64 kilograms. And again, if you want pounds, and let me get back to that. Three pounds, 9.8 ounces, almost four pounds total travel weight. Not too bad. Okay, let's check out the port selection. Let's start off on the left side where you get a USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type A port, and then you get a heating vent next to that. Moving over to the right side is a micro SD card reader. And you got two more USB Type-C ports. They're USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-C ports to be specific. And they both support display out and power delivery. And you get a 3.5 millimeter microphone headphone combo jack. And then finally an HDMI 2.1 TMDS port to round out the ports on this laptop. I would say all in all, an excellent port selection, a nice variety of legacy ports as well as some Modern ports. Now, as far as what's user upgradable, the SSD is user upgradable, although the speeds we're seeing here as far as these reads and writes are akin to Gen 3, not the faster Gen 4 we'd like to see here in 2023. Now, that's not a big deal because in real world practical use, these are certainly fast enough what you need this laptop to do. You also notice that 75 watt hour battery. It's a pretty nice size battery. We'll get into the battery life later. It's really good. And then, of course, you get your single fan for the cooling. We'll get into that later as far as the thermal performance 
performance later on in this review. Now, the RAM, unfortunately, is soldered into the motherboard, and you're looking at LP DDR4 X RAM. You can get this with up to 16 gigabytes of RAM, and it is running in dual channel mode. And when it comes to wireless, good news on that front, it has a Wi-Fi 6E Bluetooth 5.3 combo card that is slotted in. It's not soldered into the motherboard, so if you have to change it out down the road, that is an option. Now, as far as that Wi-Fi and the Bluetooth, both working excellent, no issues on either front, so good news as far as that is concerned. Now, without a doubt, the star of this show has to be this gorgeous 14-inch 2.8K OLED display. That's a resolution of 2880 by 1800. That's a 16 to 10 aspect ratio. It has a 0.2 millisecond response time. And yes, it has a 90 hertz refresh rate. Now, that means that this is going to have that really smooth experience, a really fluid experience. Although the Intel variant we looked at with the ZenBook 14X OLED, that had a dynamic refresh rate up to 120 hertz. This is... AMD variant goes is only 90 hertz. Not a big deal because I think you're going to save a little bit on the battery and still get that smooth fluid experience at the same time. Now, this being an OLED display means you're going to get the really deep blacks, the super vibrant colors, the really high contrast. Everything just seems to pop. It's all there. You got excellent coverage of the color gamut. You've got it a really color accurate display here. And you also have some deep blacks, good white points. And again, very good overall panel in terms of content creation. So if you're a content creator that does Lightroom, Photoshop, video editing, this is an excellent panel for those tasks. And it's a very bright display with a peak brightness of 550 nits when watching high dynamic range content. Watching standard dynamic range content, I measured 379 nits. So it's a very bright display. It is a glossy display. You will notice some glare and reflections depending on your lighting conditions, but it hasn't been the worst I've ever seen, but definitely something noticeable, especially in direct sunlight. But again, having that good brightness sort of overcomes a lot of those shortcomings when it comes to that glossy display. And even more good news, especially at this low price point, is the fact that this display has pen support. Taking notes, sketching out artwork is definitely an option here and a nice little value add, especially when those who want to sketch out artwork or take those notes, you don't have to shell out a lot of money to get that feature. Again, a lot of bang for the buck here. Now, they didn't send over a pen for me to check out, but I have plenty of pens here in the studio that work with this. It's the Microsoft Pen Protocol 2.0, and everything worked well as far as the pen support is concerned. And as far as the touchscreen display, the touch layer was very responsive. When it comes to pinch to zoom, it all worked well. Navigating the OS with your finger worked like a charm. Love having that feature. So this is the camera on the Asus ZenBook 14 OLED, the UM3402 here for 2023, running the AMD Ryzen processor. But what do you think about the video quality? What do you think about the audio quality of the internal mics? Now, a couple of things to note. This is not an IR camera, no face recognition on this particular model, but the power button doubles as a fingerprint scanner. So if you want to log in with Windows Hello via fingerprint scanner, you can. Now, as far as the video conferencing, what do you think about it for Zoom, work from home needs, the hybrid work environment? This will certainly do the job. I think it's a nice camera here, especially with a starting price of $699. You're not only getting a really nice camera here, you're getting a spectacular OLED display at 2.8K resolution, 90 hertz, pretty good price here. So I want to know what you think. Let me know in the comment section below. Now, a couple of things else here. I didn't notice any of the studio effects like background blur or any of the other fancy features and the auto framing and all that. But again, at $699 at this kind of camera, which is pretty good, I'm not going to ding them too hard for that. Really good overall. Let's see if we can open this with one finger. And we can. You can see it there. Let's do it again for this angle. Yeah, so you can. It looks like it has an ergo lift hinge as well. You can bring the screen back, again, 180 degrees. And for those wondering, let's see if we can see that ergo lift hinge. Yeah, it, it lifts up over here. Now, as far as the hinges are concerned, I think they're on pretty well. I did notice a little screen wobble when typing, but nothing too distracting, nothing too annoying. So that's been pretty good. I've seen worse on other laptops, that's for sure. Now the keyboard's working out really well. You're looking at 1.4 millimeters of key travel and it was really comfortable for typing out long documents, emails. It worked out really well. Now it does have a multi-level, multi-stage backlight that allows you to get work done in a dark room or a dimly lit environment. I thought that worked out well because the keys light up white, easy to see the contrast between the keys and that white LED backlight. That's been pretty good.
And when it comes to the touchpad, I thought it was very responsive when it comes to scrolling, doing all the gestures, that worked well. And it also has a numpad in it. If you press that button over there, that brings it up. You could also dim that if it gets too bright. So that's actually worked out pretty well in terms of that. Maybe a little bit gimmicky for some, but in a pinch, when you want to crunch some numbers, it might come in handy. Now, when it comes to the processor, there are two choices here, the AMD Ryzen 5 7530U, that's a six core processor with 12 threads, or you can get it with the Ryzen 7 7730U, that has two extra cores, that's eight cores with 16 threads. Now, one thing to note, these are based on the Zen 3 architecture, not the Zen 4, for those wondering. And Asus sent over the Ryzen 5 model in this review unit, again, the Ryzen 5 7530U, and actually performance is really good for the single multi-core performance for this level of device. Again, you're not breaking the bank with this, you're getting good performance and really great efficiency, as we'll talk about in a moment, really great battery life. And we're seeing good numbers here as far as the PC Mark 10 score, the Geekbench 6. Uh, of course, they're not going to blow you away in terms of the performance, but certainly adequate for what you need this laptop top to do. Everyday tasks such as Microsoft Office, email, web browsing has worked really well. Now, of course, this is not going to be as powerful as some of the Intel variants out there. When we looked at the ZenBook 14X OLED, that is an 8 series processor, a 45 watt CPU that actually has 14 cores. So that's going to be more powerful than this Ryzen based processor. That's for sure in both the single and multi-core performance, as you see here. But again, it will be certainly adequate. It'll be good enough for what you need this laptop to do. Now, this is employing integrated Radeon graphics here, as opposed to, say, Iris Xe graphics, the integrated solution that you get with an Intel variant. And I thought the performance was okay, although it's not going to blow you away in terms of powerhouse graphics performance. You're not going to be playing AAA titles on their highest settings. It's just not in the cards. But if you lower some of the settings, you can get playable frame rates on some of the more popular titles and expect better graphics performance out of the Ryzen 7 model as opposed to this Ryzen 5. That's because that will have extra cores for it to throw out as far as graphics are concerned but again even with this ryzen 5 model at this great price i think you're getting a lot of bang for the buck even in the graphics performance although just don't expect it to be a graphics powerhouse and when i ran the time spy stress test to see if this will thermal throttle under heavy load it got a score of 95.1 percent meaning it detected a little bit of thermal throttling although not too bad when you compare it to other laptops in this category so pretty good in terms of the thermal throttling now, as far as the surface temperatures are concerned, never getting overly hot. There are a couple of spots that got warm, but never to the point where too hot to the touch. It's remained relatively cool, even under heavy load. That's been pretty good. And on the underside, never going above 42, 43 degrees Celsius remained relatively cool throughout, even under load. And when it comes to the fan noise, well, it got about 51 decibels, which is pretty noticeable when under heavy load, when you're really pushing it. Of course, in the balance mode, the fan didn't really come on all that much. Now, as far as battery life is concerned, excellent results here. 13 hours and 58 minutes on the PC Mark 10 Modern Office battery test. The Asus ZenBook 14X running that Core i7 13700H got nine hours and 44 minutes on that same test. Same thing with the video playback. We're seeing excellent results, 13 hours and 52 minutes, whereas the ZenBook 14X OLED got nine hours and 10 minutes. A big improvement when it comes to battery life with this AMD-based model over the Intel-based model. There's no doubt about it. Now, as far as speakers are concerned, the ZenBook 14 OLED UM3402 has Dolby Atmos speakers, and that will help with the spatial audio. And I thought the sound was actually really good for a laptop that only cost $699, at least the Core i5 model, of course, goes up from there. But I think it's a really good Windows laptop when it comes to the audio. Now, let's compare it to the MacBook Pro 14, which I think is the best in the business. And as far as a 14-inch laptop, is concerned it has a six speaker audio or sound system and i think it's really good but this is really good on its own right not quite as good as this but i want you to be the judge so let me know in the comment section below now let's give them a listen
All right, let's bring it all home. What do I think about the Asus ZenBook 14 OLED, the UM3402 here for 2023? I like the stunning 2.8K OLED display. I like the 90 hertz refresh rate, the 550 nits of peak brightness, the pen support, the slick design with the ergo lift hinge, great battery life. I love the fact that it runs cool under load, good port selection, and great bang for the buck. It really won't break the bank. Negatives, we have soldered RAM. It's a major fingerprint magnet with this J black finish reflective display and noticeable fan noise under heavy load but there's a lot to like here ladies and gentlemen i highly recommend the asus zenbook 14 oled um 3402 here for 2023 so please hit the like button please subscribe please share this video don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section below. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know if there's a device or something out there you think I should review. I'll do my best to try to make that happen. Don't forget to check me out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course, my website, amdtechreviews.com. So until next time, this is Andrew, and I'll see you in the next video.